Given the the type of leaders we have and their philosophy and their the base, you know, there's a good chance that they're going to push this as far as they can. I mean, until the dollar has completely collapsed and then they just can't get away with it anymore. It's the dollar crash that kind of brings the problem to a head and turns it into a crisis. So before that happens, there's really no incentive for anybody to change. So when you give government power, they usually don't like to give it back. So do you think there's ever going to be a time where they're going to slow down the money printer or is it just going to continue forever? Well, they can't do it forever because at some point the money has no value. And, you know, there's not much sense in printing money that buys nothing. So at some point they're going to have to turn off the presses. And in fact, hopefully at some point they're going to slow them down quite a bit. But, you know, we'll see how long they can resist doing that because doing it involves a lot of pain short-term pain uh, economically, politically, that our leaders really don't want. And of course, if you look at all of the promises that they've made to the voters that can't possibly be paid for, rather than admit that you know, none of this can, you know, is affordable, they can just print the money and, and act as if you know, the government can provide these things. So given the, the type of leaders we have and their philosophy and their, the base, you know, there's a good chance that they're going to push this as far as they can. I mean, until the dollar has completely collapsed and then they just can't get away with it anymore. Yes. Yeah, so you think there's a good chance that they're just going to continue until the dollar collapses and they're not going to try to stop it before it happens. Right. I, you know, it's, it's the dollar crash that kind of brings the problem to a head and turns it into a crisis. So before that happens, there's really no incentive for anybody to change. Yeah. Because as long as they can print money and people will accept it and the value doesn't go down too much, well, they'll just keep doing it rather than being honest with the public and accepting the consequences. So what does a dollar crash look like to the everyday person? Because, you know, we hear that term thrown around every now and then, but it, at least for me, it doesn't really click. Like, what is the effect of that? What does that look like at the ground? Well, the dollar is what you have to trade to buy a goods and services. I mean, we're not, you know, bartering. People aren't just, you know, providing, you know, exchanging what they produce directly for what somebody else produces. You produce something and you get paid dollars for, for producing. And now when you want to buy stuff, you know, that other people produced, well, you give them some of the dollars you earned. And if they want to buy the stuff that you help produce, well, they pay with the dollars that, that they earn. So if the dollar loses value, then all the dollars that we've saved buy a lot less and all the dollars that we're earning buy a lot less. Now, of course, we can try to adjust because if the dollar really crashes, you know, and you have a job, you can go to your boss and say, hey, you know, you got to give me a raise. I'm not going to keep working and giving you all this labor you know, for the same amount of dollars that you were giving me before, because I can't hardly buy anything. You need to, you need to double my salary or triple my salary because otherwise I'm, you know, no point in working. And, and so, yeah, and your employer may be able to do that to the extent that he can go to all of his customers and say, Hey, yeah, I got to double my prices or triple my prices because, you know, the dollars crashed. It's not worth what it used to worth be worth. So for people that have current income, you know, there may be some ability to recapture the lost value of the dollar by adjusting your earnings so that you're earning more dollars. But for the money you've already saved, right? People that have set aside money that they earned in the past, that supply of money is, is fixed, especially if it's, you know, in bonds or in a pension or some type of fixed income where, you know, you're just getting a set amount of money on a weekly or monthly basis. And that's what you have. And that doesn't change. And so if inflation, you know, causes prices to double or triple or quadruple, but you're just getting the same amount of dollars. Well, you know, you you can you can't buy the same amount of stuff. Maybe you can only buy a quarter of what you used to be able to buy, and that is a huge loss. I mean, that's like losing seventy five percent of your money. I mean, even though you still have your money, it only has twenty five percent of its buying power. So there's real losses that a lot of Americans are going to suffer as a result of the dollar's decline. Right. I've been looking at other cases of hyperinflation, and most of them. The government either ends up issuing a new currency, they adopt a foreign <clears throat> currency, 
what do you think is going to happen if the U.S. dollar crashes? Like, is there going to be a new U.S. dollar or are we going to adopt some other currency? Well, first of all, I mean, there's a difference between maybe a crash where it loses 50, 60, 70, 80 percent, which would be pretty big. And hyperinflation. I mean, hyperinflation, and you lose, you know, like 99 percent or more. I mean, that's I mean, there's a big difference. I mean, that's not just a crash. That's just complete wipeout of the currency. And, you know, the prices, you know, you know, you could go infinity. Right. So hopefully we don't have real hyperinflation in the Weimar Republic, you know, Zimbabwe sense of the word. Right. Where we have trillion dollar bills. Right. That that is the worst possible outcome. I'm not saying that's impossible and that we couldn't go there because, you know, we could. But hopefully, you know, before it gets anywhere near that bad, we do do what's necessary to stop the bleeding, which, again, is going to be a major, major financial crisis. And it's going to cause a lot of problems in order to do the right thing, which is why politicians resist doing it as long as they they possibly can. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our interview with Peter Schiff. Peter is an economist, financial commentator, millionaire stockbroker, and someone that I really like to take into account his opinions, along with people with other differing economic opinions. You can check out the full interview we did together with the link below, where we went over a ton of cool stuff like inflation, hyperinflation, the Fed, the money printer, the dollar crash, capitalism, socialism, democracy, the gold standard, the creature from Jekyll Island, and a ton more. Really great conversation that we have been getting a lot of great feedback on, which you can check out with the link below or on the screen right now. You can subscribe for more dangerous conversations for dangerous minds just like yourselves with the red button below. It's free, you can dislike, unsubscribe, Leave us your best hate comments whenever you want, so you might as well do it because you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Check out the other interviews we've done on the screen right now. Stay dangerous out there, and we will see you guys in the next one.